welcome back in the previous video we were able to dispatch an action to log in a user so in this video we are going to focus on what registering a user so first thing first let's go to let's try to render our register so here the route is called what register and we have the registration form right first name last name email and a password cool so first thing first, let's go to our SRC and then pages, users and register. So here we are going to handle the forms as we did for the login. So because we did, we are going to use the same path pattern. I'm going to make some copy and paste here. So we need what? Yup. And then formic. And we need what? Use dispatch. All these three packages we need it here and next is what let's create our schema so like i said we're gonna be copy and paste the exact way we did so if you know the format all the rest are like copy and paste in the same pattern right so here we don't need we need email we need password but we also have additional field that we want to what we want to also collect like first name and last name so we are going to add that properties to that right so let's get going all right so we need to add what is called first name and last name right so let me make it pretty easy all right so we have email and password next one is let's add first name and as you can guess yup and automatically i have the auto import so first name is required and i want to keep track of what my last name and last name is required and that is it so you can guess we need what initialize our hot formic so the same process copy this one and then an action to dispatch right so if you didn't watch how i did for the login then you can go back and watch before coming here and because if you are confused let me say in that way if you are confused about what you are doing here all right so now we don't need the login here so for now let's remove this because we don't have and let's try to console log <coughs> sorry guys let's console log the values that we are getting okay so now we are done with that so next is let's bind to respective form input and here on the form on submit we need the on submit we are going to use on submit we are going to use formic right so formic dot handle submit all right so it's done next is let's bind all the properties so this one is the first name right as you can guess if you go back to login how we bind it so we are going to copy everything from login on blair everything it's going to be the same thing the change difference is going to be the form input names and let's place it here on the first name right this is the first name field so we are going to change this field is not email but instead what first name so it's with my multi-selection i click on one and then I press command D and then DD and I have my multi-selection. So here, let's use what? First name. Very good, first name. Because that's what we use. We use here. First name, right? All right. So the same thing is for the errors, the same way we did. So let's uncomment this one. And now, if the form field name is touched and there's an error, then you display the error. If there is, is touched and there's error, display the error. All right, so you have that. And the next step gonna be the last name. So the same process, let's copy this one. And then on the last name, because I know my uh, placeholder means last name, so I know where it's being located, like that. And then let's change this one to last name right and then oh i didn't select it okay so last name 
as that last name all right and then for the errors too the same thing let's copy this error here error display here and place it below the last name and let's change it's not first name but instead it's what last name like that all right and the last one gonna be the email right so let's copy the error dis display email here and let's change this one to email like that and then for the input field let's copy this one the one we have it here and then let's place it here and change the field name to email as that and the last thing is going to be the password for this one so let's place it here again and let's change the field to password all right and then for the error let's also copy this one and then let's place it here and let's change this one to password okay we have it all right so now we are good to go but the last thing is for the initial values you only really have email and password so let's add our first name empty string and last name as that so let's start the console log so let's go back to the form where is my application yeah it's here so let me open the console and let's try if everything is gonna work for us so let me clear and then when I click on this let's see when I see that I have email fields required password but the first name is not displaying the error right so what is wrong with the first name so let's remove everything from here and let's make sure that the errors are displaying email is working last name is working by the first name there is no error so what is the problem so last name so let's scroll down and locate where we have the last name this is first name and here is last name and here is last name so why is it so last name last name here and for the errors we have last name so what is the problem that we are not seeing the error for last name oh first now it's working i didn't save it okay so now everything is working so if you are refused to provide any of this field now when i click here i have it. but now let's try to log anything to the console okay this means that email is required any email and now there we go i have it so we know that our form is working perfectly so next is let's go ahead and create our action and reducer for dispatching this action all right so let's close this one and let's head over to redox and slices and we are working on the users and user slices so first we did the login here right we did the login here this is the login part the, the login so let's have some space so the syntax is going to be the same thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy everything so like i said if you didn't watch the previous video you can go back and watch for the login part of it and then let me paste it here and let me change this one to register action and let's change the name here called register re, register register user action and make sure that you change the action type and here you can make it whatever you want but it must be unique so register and the same thing for this login you need a payload to register right so i have my config here but the endpoint gonna change instead of login it's gonna be what register as that but as you can see that okay, we have duplicate lines of code here and here as well so assuming that we change our api from the back end unless we go through all our code and then what make sure we change this one too so because of that we are going to create a utility function 
right? And then you're going to export this URL. So in our application, anytime you make changes to our endpoint, we can make it, we can make the changes from one file. And gonna be our life, gonna make our life easier. So here, let's create one file inside the utils. Let's call this one base URL base url dot js and it's going to be pretty simple right we're going to export that url so const base url is equal to our endpoint so let me copy let me cut everything from here all right and then come here and then place it here like that place it here like that and then let me export this function oh this variable uh -huh. export default okay export default the base url so inside our user slices let's require that base url auto import and i have the auto import as this all right cool so let me change this one so you know the base url okay sorry the base is gonna be api right everything starts with api right so um api something like this okay api so here instead of this api i'm going to remove everything from here and use user.login right so to inject some dynamic variable let's use template neutral like this and then and then let's use base url and then slash is it slash sorry slash users slash login like that so the same thing for the uh, register where i have my payload this one sorry so here i also need to bring to inject the base url so base url and here gonna be users slash register register as that so now i have my payload i'm receiving from the font from the form and make a request to this endpoint so when i get the result back return to the user otherwise we play the error so the last thing is i also need to handle the reducer right so as you can see this one is for login as you can see for pending loading and other stuff so to make our life easier we are going to copy this ones and then paste it here and make changes to it because i said that we did this one for um login so we have the pending state here for field so let me call this one um register okay register action okay so login uh, pending for field and rejected so the next one gonna be here gonna be what the sorry login here it's not register but it's login but the second one so let me uh, keep pending for field and rejected so now i know that this is for what this is for my login so the action here is not login but instead register action and gonna be the same thing right so when it's loading put loading there's a no error and there's no server error and let's change this one to register and here the same thing you want to return the same property name called user of right and then the same thing applies to this called register user action so we are done with it right because we're exporting this this file all right so the last thing is what i need to dispatch the action register so lucky for me inside my pages and inside users and register i can now i already have my dispatch everything here so let me require the action register action and i have the auto import sorry I have the auto import as this all right cool so 
I'm going to display the action here. So let's call this batch and then pass in the register action. And then the things I want to register with are the values. And that is it, you see? So if you know the format, it's going to be pretty easy. So that's why I say Redux Toolkit is pretty easy to use if you're familiar with it. Okay, so, oh, I guess I'm error here. Let's refresh it. Okay, cool. Okay, it's time to test if you're going to get the response. So there's nothing, there's no action being called here. So let's try our luck. Let's type in anything and click on that. Oh, that is great. You see, we have user registered with this credential state and you can see we have the user of the one we registered with. You see that it's pretty easy and the form one is also cool. All right, so our login and registration is done, but what we need to handle in the next video is that for both login and then the register, when we click on lo register, we want to tell the user that maybe it's loading or there's an error and therefore we can display it here and if the user login successfully, we want to redirect the person to the person's profile page or any page that we want to redirect the person to. So let's do that one in the next video.